Right now, meet Madison Magazine's 2024 Chef of the Year and the family and cultural inspirations behind her culinary creations. Tomorrow will be colder, but record warmth is possible early next week. We'll be paying the price for it. We'll be tracking thunderstorms by Tuesday. And Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin asks the Wisconsin Supreme Court to rule on the constitutional right to abortion in the state. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Here is a live look at the sky cam tonight. It was a perfect day to get outside, enjoy some nice weather. Temperatures in the upper 50s again today, not feeling like February. It was unbelievable out there. And that warmth, though, may come with a bit of a price early next week. We could see a chance of severe weather Tuesday. And for more on that, Let's go to your first one forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on the weather patio. Gary. Well, Eric, I think the probability now is high enough that we need to put a first one weather alert day in the forecast for Tuesday and Tuesday evening. This is for the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms. We'll be looking at record warmth with temperatures in the middle 60s. That could lead to thunderstorms that could produce high winds and hail, maybe even the possibility for an isolated tornado. This will be mainly Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out a day six of weather outlook that includes Illinois and Iowa just to our south, but the severe weather threat could extend northward into southern Wisconsin. Visible cloud track shows lots of sunshine today. Uh, we'll look for clear skies tonight, but colder weather is lurking to our north. Last night, temperatures dropped into the upper 20s and lower 30s. Madison uh, dropped to 28, but so far, we were near 60. 59 here in Madison. Many locations hit the 60-degree mark, and current temperatures are still well into the 50s. Uh, Boscobel still at 61 here in Dane County, 55 in Middleton, 59 degrees in McFarland, and also uh, 59 degrees in Sun Prairie. Otherwise, this evening, look for mostly clear skies. Temperatures will drop into the lower 40s by late evening. Later on, I'll take a look at the possibility for some flakes of snow at this time tomorrow, and then that severe weather threat early next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Police in Fitchburg have arrested a suspect who they say was involved in robberies at two separate banks yesterday. Madison police say a 38-year-old woman was identified as the suspect in the robbery at Old National Bank on Raymond Road and the Associated Bank on Fish Hatchery Road. This morning, a member of the Dane County Sheriff's Office spotted the woman driving in the town of Dunn, eventually leading officers on a brief chase. Police used tire deflation devices to stop the woman's vehicle, and she was taken into custody. The woman faces charges of robbery, eluding, and recklessly endangering safety. Chef Jamie Brown Sukasumi is Madison Magazine's 2024 Chef of the Year, serving up new twists on traditional Laotian dishes at her Willie Street restaurant. Our Braden Ross sat down with Chef Jamie this morning to get a behind-the-scenes look at the family flavors that make Ahan a top Madison destination. Braden? That's right, family heirlooms can come in many different forms. For Chef Jamie, they're recipes that she now gets to share with the Madison community, bringing a little piece of her heritage to the table. I grew up around my mom cooking all the time. For like Chef Jamie Brown Sukasumi, <laughs> the restaurant business is in her blood. My parents had a restaurant when I was really little, and then um, growing up in Beaverdam, my aunt had a Chinese restaurant there. So growing up, we'd always run around there. So when she decided to open her own, it kind of felt a little second nature, you know. Jamie started a Han with her husband Chuck as a takeout restaurant in the middle of the pandemic. This is the red curry udon. But what started as meals served exclusively in cardboard containers soon became a full-fledged restaurant where Jamie could share her generational gift with the Madison community. And the first time putting food on a plate was a little crazy. The menu is full of family flavors. Khao soy long prabang which is a dish that's actually passed on from my mom's grandmother. I like to share like the flavors and things that come from my culture. I feel is really special and to learn those recipes and techniques from my mom, you know, is like really, really special. Jamie's mom, Manola, still shares her expertise, creating new dishes alongside her daughter in a Han's kitchen. Sometimes we'll be doing something and it's more like, oh, no, don't do it like that. Like, I'll show you how I do it, and then we kind of go back and forth. In 2023, Jamie was nominated for the James Beard Award for Emerging Chef. This year, she was named Best Chef by Madison Magazine. Like, I was really surprised, and, you know, I'm just so honored and grateful. But for Jamie, the accolades are just reminders of the shoulders she stands on. It's like, you know, a really cool way to spread awareness about, you know, Laos and my culture and, you know, where I'm from and, you know, the things that are important to my mom. 
Now there's still time to nominate your favorites for Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Awards. Voting closes on February 29th and you can find all the information you need online at channel3000.com. Congratulations, Chef Jamie. Boy, are we hungry yeah, now. That looks so good. good. Thank you, Braden. Tonight, business owners of color in Madison are being celebrated for the services they give to the community that they say are often overlooked. And they're doing it in Hollywood fashion. The sixth annual Black Business Awards, Armand Rahman joins us live from this red carpet event. Armand? Yeah, Hollywood fashion is right, Eric and Susan. I don't know if you can see behind me, there is a whole red carpet, and in just a little bit, a lot of those business owners are gonna be walking down it here, getting their picture taken, given the full Hollywood movie star experience. And that's really what the Madison Black Chamber of Commerce is hoping for. They really want to give the spotlight on these business owners and, you know, give them a little bit of the flowers that they deserve because being a business owner is hard and there can be other challenges being a business owner of colors. And then after the red carpet event later on tonight, there's going to be an awards uh, session where they're going to recognize different entrepreneurs of color in hair and skin care, media, retail, mobile pop-up vendors, and a whole lot more. It's going to be a jam-packed night here at Monona Terrace tonight. And that's what it is about, recognizing the diversity and strength that we have here in the business community in Madison. Also tonight, guests will get a sneak peek at a Black Wall Street Marketplace exhibit that will be showcased here at the Monona Terrace as well, and also visit some more black vendors. And that Black Wall Street exhibit will be uh, happening tomorrow, open to the public tomorrow at Monona Terrace from 2 to 4.30 p.m., so definitely want to check that out as well. So I'm going to uh, look around, hope for some more uh, movie star-looking business owners here to talk to, and I'll have more tonight at 10. For now, live in Madison, Armand Rahman, News 3 Now. Armand, thank you. It was a thankful tone and a lesson for lawmakers at the 20th Annual State of the Tribes Address at the Capitol today. Potawatomi Tribal Chair James Crawford thanking the legislature for its work on many issues, including quicker Medicaid reimbursement and also indigenous language road welcome signs, also providing access for tribal elders to indigenous traditional foods. But he also wants lawmakers to keep working together to find solutions for tribes. It's important that we gain perspective from those around us. That is why it is so important that all of you in this room reach out to those around you, including Wisconsin's tribes, to gain new perspectives on the issues you are charged with tackling. And Crawford urged lawmakers to do what different tribes do in Wisconsin, set aside their differences, reach across the aisle, to find common ground. Today, Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin filed a petition for original action with the state Supreme Court, asking the high court to take jurisdiction and to interpret the state's constitution to protect the right to have an abortion and the right for doctors to provide abortion care. This marks the second major case on abortion in Wisconsin. In December, a Dane County judge threw out an 1849 law that bans abortion in the state. But this new lawsuit goes a bit further. Planned Parenthood is asking the high court to not just throw out a law, but to create a new constitutional right to abortion in Wisconsin. It deals directly with people's, with people's liberties. So when there's an issue of statewide importance um, that is likely to recur without a decision from the Wisconsin Supreme Court um, and that deals with people's liberties, the court is controlled by a liberal majority and could be expected to rule in Planned Parenthood's favor. A new Marquette Law School poll was released today giving former President Donald Trump a slight edge over President Biden. The poll from this month shows that among registered voters, former President Trump has a lead 51 to 49 over President Biden. The poll also shows Nikki Haley leads President Biden in a hypothetical matchup by 16 points, 58% to 42 percent. Meanwhile, Haley continues the bus stop tour of her home state ahead of Saturday's primary vote. The former South Carolina governor faces long odds of winning, but nonetheless, she says her campaign will keep rolling no matter what happens in her home state GOP primary this weekend. Mary Beth Bockhorst from right here in Wisconsin traveled all the way to South Carolina to help get out the vote for Nikki Haley. She's part of the Women for Nikki Coalition. With chapters in all 50 states, the goal is to reach out to voters not interested in voting for Donald Trump. When I thought it was going to be Trump and Biden this summer, um, I, I couldn't sleep at night. The majority of women, I think, have been disengaged. I think a lot of women left the party, the Republican Party. 
But according to a recent CBS News poll among likely female GOP primary voters, Haley trails Trump by more than 30 points, with almost 9 in 10 voters saying they are firmly decided. Cell phone service on multiple networks nationwide is slowly being restored at this hour, but tens of thousands of customers coast to coast woke up today to find error messages or no service connection at all, meaning no calls, no texting. Laura Aguirre has more on where the outages stand right now as the search for why it all happened continues. Downdetector.com was a popular website across the country Thursday as it monitored a widespread national outage impacting a number of wireless carriers, with the most occurring on AT&T's network. Some users report waking up to SOS messages. Others had no connection at all no ability to make calls, send or receive texts, and in several southeastern states on the AT&T network, 911 service was temporarily unavailable over the past two days. The company telling CNN it was working urgently throughout the day to restore service to its customers, encouraging them to use Wi-Fi calling until then. The highest number of AT&T outages were reported across the Midwest, Southeast, and in Texas, according to downdetector.com. Customers also reported some outages on other major carriers like T-Mobile and Verizon. Although T-Mobile tells CNN they did not experience an outage and are operating normally. But at one point Thursday morning, downdetector.com showed just under 2,000 outages reported on T-Mobile's network. Verizon also said it was operating normally after peaking at just over 4,000 outages in the morning. As for the why it happened, a wireless industry source says for now, there's no indication that it was a cyber attack or other malicious activity. Public safety experts say wireless network outages often occur for mundane reasons, like construction-related digging or software issues. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. And as it mentioned, being able to contact emergency responders stemmed from this large outage. Johnny Leonard, the training and outreach manager for Dane County Public Safety Communications, shared some tips with us on how to get a hold of 911 if we ever see a problem like this again. You can enable Wi-Fi calling and you're on a Wi-Fi network that has an active connection. Um, you should have the capability to, uh, to place outgoing calls and receive incoming calls, and that would allow you to get through to 911. If your phone does not offer Wi-Fi calling or it isn't working, another way is to use a landline phone. But if you don't have one, try to see if anyone nearby has a working phone if needed. In Dane County, though, text messaging 911 is an option, though the preference is to use that as a last resort if you can't call. Up next, we go back to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti, a complete check of his certified most accurate forecast. And on the heels of a failed effort for immigration reform in Congress, the president is planning his own executive action. The details ahead at five. And a strong surge on Wall Street boosts the Dow Jones Industrial Average some 457 points. The Nasdaq soars 461 and the S&P 500 adds 105. We'll be right back. Imagine trying to take on one of the big car companies. It's not easy. Yet this year, one local law firm finalized the largest compensatory verdict in state history against an automaker, over $38 million. And it was no fluke. That same firm has been holding big car companies accountable for faulty designs that cause injury for over 50 years. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you quality name brand workwear and footwear because we get you. From the farm to the job site to your own backyard, we have great deals on your favorite rugged styles for spring. Right now, earn $50 in Carhartt bucks when you spend $200 on Carhartt gear. Men's Wrangler 5-star jeans, buy one, get one half price. And while you're in for workwear, save on new resealable bags of Blaine's mixed nuts or cashews, just $16.99. Plus, don't miss this weekend's free snack sampling event. See farmandfleet.com. Your logo can identify your company, inspire your customers, and energize your team. We're 4imprint, and we can help your logo create moments that matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Welcome to Badgerscape Design and Landscape. We offer a full range of landscaping services, from design to maintenance. Our professional team is dedicated to meeting all your landscaping needs. Call us at 608-295-1446 or visit BadgerscapeDesignAndLandscape.com. A traditional performer of great country music. How it felt that day. It's Daryl Worley. Performing live Saturday morning.
March 9th at Hookshot Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. An incredible night with country music superstar Daryl Worley. March 9th at Ho-Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Watch the Bucks return to broadcast TV when they take on the T-Wolves on your new local home for select Bucks games. Don't miss a second of the action as the Greek Freak heads to Minnesota to tangle with one of the top teams in the West. It's a Twin Cities showdown. Bucks. T-Wolves on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Friday at 9 here on WISC TV3. Record warmth Tuesday could lead to severe weather and an alert day is in the forecast. At 6, I'll let you know when you can expect the severe weather. Then Planned Parenthood is taking a new path to get abortion rights in Wisconsin. How this could work tonight on News We Now at 6, moving forward. Tonight at 10, an award-worthy idea started the family business. Now they're going the extra mile to give back. It's a win-win for everyone. I'll show how you can help them do something good with the old trophies stashed in your basement. Tonight at 10, moving forward. You're watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. President Biden under fire from critics for his border policies is considering new executive actions that could restrict asylum seekers at the U.S.-Mexico border. It follows a failed attempt by Congress to pass bipartisan reform. Gloria Pasmino has the details. The issue has vexed presidents, both Republican and Democrat, for decades. Now, faced with growing criticism for his handling of the border, President Joe Biden is considering executive action likely to draw the ire of progressive Democrats and immigration advocates, taking executive action to restrict migrants seeking asylum at the U.S.-Mexico border. He started his presidency saying that he was going to be different from Barack Obama and Donald Trump on immigration. He's actually pushed out more executive orders than Donald Trump on immigration because of Congress's uh, uh, failure, uh, failure to act. The move is similar to controversial policies attempted during the Trump administration and would extend some of the harshest measures in the border compromise legislation that Republicans tanked earlier this month, including a shutdown of the border, which Biden has recently embraced. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. The Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel is reviewing the proposal to see if it could withstand challenges in court. The bottom line is this is exactly what President Trump tried, um, but was ultimately enjoined by the courts from doing in 2018. Even if legally fraught, the move allows Biden to counteract one of his biggest political vulnerabilities. Securing the border is priority number one. Hands down. We're going to be paying a big price. They have to stop it. They have to close the border. But without congressional action, the White House is limited in what it can do. And this proposal would only address one issue within a system that is bursting at the seams. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. Another day of April-like weather in February, <laughs> but reality returns tomorrow, right, Gary? Yeah, this is going to be an up-and-down forecast, and when that happens, you know there's going to be some storminess. Well, three things you need to know in the forecast. Temperatures this time tomorrow will be down about 25 degrees or more, and we'll be looking at a mixture of rain and snow showers. But then we're going to see near or above record high temperatures by Monday and Tuesday of next week, as temperatures soared around 60 on Monday and mid-60s on Tuesday, and then showers and thunderstorms Tuesday into Tuesday. Tuesday evening will mix with snow late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning as it turns colder again. But first things first, the rain and snow shower chance tomorrow. We start out in the mid 30s by 9 a.m. By noontime, we're at our high for the day around 40. But notice that wind shift to the north and northeast. Those temperatures drop back into the middle 30s, and that's why we'll see a mixture of rain and snow showers. Nothing too big, but by uh, 6 p.m., we're already down below freezing, and then the skies clear out. The rain and snow showers come to an end. We'll be down in the teens by early on Saturday morning. But by Monday afternoon, we're looking for near record high temperatures around 59 degrees. And even warmer weather is expected on Tuesday. 
The low temperature of 45 would smash the record warm low of 38. The record high of 65 would be 7 degrees above the record high. That's almost unheard of with 150 years worth of weather records. So when that happens, you know the potential is there for some storms. We do have a severe weather threat and a first warm weather alert day in the forecast for Tuesday. High winds and hail the main threats, but we can't rule out an isolated tornado. We've already had our first February tornado in Wisconsin. Why not have another, it seems? That's what Mother Nature is showing us. But here's the setup. Tuesday morning, winds aloft from west to east, winds near the ground from the south. That's wind shear that can get the storms organized. A warm front lifts northward. As long as it stays mainly north of us, we'll be warm enough for the potential for thunderstorms to develop. Then by 3 p.m., that we have that wind shear. But notice as we get into the evening, the winds start to shift to a more westerly direction. That will cut off the uh, wind shear and still give us the chance for showers and thunderstorms. And then it will turn colder by Wednesday morning with maybe some flakes of snow mixing in. Storm Prediction Center already has a risk of severe thunderstorms to our south for uh, Tuesday, so that bears some watching. And again, uh, this is the, we have high confidence there will be thunderstorms, record warm temperatures, and the wind shear. What we're not quite as sure of is the whether or not there'll be enough moisture, whether or not morning rain could keep us a little bit cooler, and the timing of the cold front. So let's take a look at planning your night. Tonight, no problems. Clear skies. Temperatures start out in the mid-40s, drop to the upper 30s by midnight. Middle 30s by uh, 3 a.m. Mostly clear skies overnight with a few clouds coming in by morning. Low temperatures right around freezing. Planning your night across Dane County. 32 Brooklyn, 32 in Windsor, 32 in Cross Plains with mainly clear skies. 33 for the Lone Platteville. Lone Rock will drop to 31. For tomorrow, look for a high temperature of 40, but that'll be around noon. And then we'll see some afternoon rain and snow showers as temperatures drop into the middle 30s. First warm 7 to 10 day forecast. Chilly Saturday, warming up Sunday. Near record highs Monday and Tuesday. The thunderstorms Tuesday. Tuesday, mixing with snow late Tuesday night, ending on Wednesday morning, chilly on Thursday, and those temperatures go right back up again as we head toward next weekend. As we check out our first warrant traffic, well, right now, things looking pretty good. Just our usual minor slowdowns around Monona Drive on the eastbound Beltline, but otherwise, uh, traffic times, about 16 minutes either direction on, on uh, the Beltline between I-3990 and University Avenue. Inbound from Sun Prairie to downtown will take you 18 minutes. The same trip outbound is 19 minutes today. US 12 middle to Sauk City is 17 minutes, and it's 25 minutes from the Beltline to Janesville on I-3990. That's your news for you now for Sworn Traffic. Jerry, thank you. And still to come, how a new program seeks to add some diversity to orchestras around the country exposing young children to music earlier. That's next at 5. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Save on big projects. Menards 11% off everything is happening now. Don't miss out. Complete your laundry room. Save 11% on Clearview cabinetry. Transform your home with 11% off new Mastercraft doors. Build your dream deck and get 11% off Ultra Deck composite decking. Or go even bigger and get 11% off a whole house. There's no limit to what you can save. Menards 11% off everything is happening now. Save big money at Menards. The Build, Remodel, and Landscape Show is coming, and admission is free. Shop, compare, and save big. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, only at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. This right here is confidence in a bottle. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video. Video, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes. And I did this to my father. We were at home. So we applied it to his under eye bags. And let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view. And now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Hey Wayne, shopping for a new door? I sure am. This fiberglass door is really strong. We love ours. Do you need something more dependable? Yes, something that's durable, dent resistant, knows how to take a hit and is going to last for years. We're still talking about the door, right? Uh, oh yeah, right, of course. 
Right now, you can customize your home for 0% interest for up to 60 months when you place your order by February 23rd. Visit PellaWI.com today. Pull up a stool. The local bar scene's hopping. Check out Madison Magazine's guide to hot spots, cool sips, late night bites, and more. Then meet this year's visionary Best of Madison Business honorees. Madison Magazine. Online and on newsstands now. Madison Magazine presents The City Guide, your ultimate resource for Madison area adventures. With inside tips on where to eat, what to do, and places to see. Available now on area newsstands or online at madisonmagazine.com. Experience the Channel 3000 news app today. Tailored for your news the way you want it. With a customizable home page and faster page loads, download the Channel 3000 news app. Powered by News 3 Now. Charlotte Deleste, News 3 Now at 4, 6, and 10. Moving forward. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Moving forward. Over the last several years, American orchestras have been in the spotlight for their lack of diversity. In the last decade, some made inroads in hiring more Asian and Latino players, but studies show the needle barely moved with increasing the number of black musicians. Ivan Rodriguez reports on how one program in the industry is inspiring orchestras across the country to address the issue from a young age. Once a week, 15-year-old Waverly Alexander and her instructor, Robert Anemone, get one step closer to achieving her dream. I want to become a professional violinist. A desire that since joining the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra's Talent Development Program, or TDP, seems within reach. The year-round musical education diversity program provides young black and Latino musicians the highest level of training alongside current orchestra musicians. Talk about years from now, but I see the effects of it already. <laughs> Joshua Williams is a graduate of the program and inaugural fellow with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. For younger black and Latino musicians, Joshua is an example that it's possible to break into an industry not recognized for its diversity. We've been banging the table and screaming and trying so hard to change the demographic in classical music. People of color make up 21% of orchestra players across the U.S. That's up from 14% a decade ago. The share of black or African-American musicians shifted less, only rising to 2.4 percent. The problem is there, there are barriers to entry at a lot of different points along the process. By providing financial assistance, performance, and audition opportunities, the talent development program addresses obstacles young musicians can face. All the work that we've done to this point is not in vain. Although Waverly's dream may be years away from being fulfilled, seeing people who look like her it lets me know that I'm not alone. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. We'll get a final check on your first warrant forecast when we come back. Watch the Bucks return to broadcast TV when they take on the T-Wolves on your new local home for select Bucks games. Don't miss a second of the action as the Greek freak heads to Minnesota to tangle with one of the top teams in the West. It's a Twin Cities showdown. Bucks, T-Wolves on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Friday at 9 here on WISC TV3. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three Ps. What are the three Ps? The three Ps of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80 and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you two. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. 
No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock, so your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction to your loved ones with your final wishes. And it's yours free, just for calling. So call now for free information. Call 1-800-914-3131 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-914-3131. There's no risk or obligation. 1-800-914-3131. Call now. When a crane collapsed during construction of a major league sports stadium, three workers lost their lives. Their widows called us. When maintenance workers were permanently injured by an industrial accident at a public utilities power plant, the seven injured workers called us. When a factory exploded, injuring dozens of workers, 18 victims, including all three families of men who lost their lives, called us. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish, and Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. Coming up tonight here on the CBS Evening News, the movie Barbie was one of the biggest hits of the year, grossing over a billion dollars and sparking a new conversation about women's roles in society. Tonight in our heart of America, meet the woman who had her own groundbreaking role in the evolution of the iconic Barbie. That and more headlines tonight on the CBS Evening News. Gary's back, final check of the forecast. Well, we've got uh, clear skies right now. Uh, it should be a, a nice night. Uh, temperatures are mild, though. Right now, 58 in Madison. This is the end of February. Uh, Dane County, 56 here in, or in Middleton, 60 right now in Stoughton, 57 in, in uh, Mount Horeb. Look for temperatures to drop into the lower 40s by late evening. Again, that first one weather alert day in the forecast for Tuesday and Tuesday evening for the possibility for some severe weather. And then temperatures go up and down over the next 10 days. Uh, there was not any ice on that lake. The shot of the lake. <laughs> now with these temperatures, yeah. it'd be kind of hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> We're back in 30 minutes for News Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.